And so again, this topic is uh, the steps and the small updates need to be performed when using the auto failover to perform uh, added volume replicated tasks. But I'm going to give this to you at the end of the session so everybody has it. It'll be in your uh, chat window. Um, the reason why I'm recording this now is that these steps are very important. And below is the information, depending on the version of DSSV6 you're using, will determine the patch to be applied. So if many of you have the build 5377, make sure that you uh, ask or inform us. We'll be able to tell from your logs if you're not sure that we will give you a certain build for a patch for that build that you have. So here you see uh, 0904A is for build 5377 and so forth for 5626 and 5794. 5845, which is the latest build. And that's what we're going to be working with today. Um, so we're going to run through the simulation the process to show you, and then we're going to demonstrate adding the replicated task. It's very unique. A lot of you have been asking for it, and we have it. And I want to make this last little note here. Uh, what's important about these small updates is that you need to match them. So if you have build 5377, you update to 526, please ask for that build, uh, that patch of 0904B, and you will have to remove uh, the 4A for both the uh, both of the primary and the secondary server. So please keep that in mind. There is a new release that's coming out on ETA at the end of uh, March of this year, next month. And I want you all to be aware that you will need to remove these small updates. Why? Well, because they're integrated uh, into this newer version that we have. It's going to be released, and it's really in our new kernel. So you will not. All right. Let's get right to it. We're going to go ahead and bring this down. And let me show you what I have up on my screen here so everybody speed. Okay. So on right here, I'm right here on my last octet, uh, 220, uh, colon 448. This is my source server. Uh, we'll go right into it. And then here I have right next to it, uh, 221, colon 449. And this one is with the latest kernel down which that needs to be done. Okay, so what we're going to focus on right now is the destination, as you see here, and the source. In the beginning, um, instead of just showing, everybody pretty much knows how to do the replication, but I just want to make it. So right now we have this LV000, which is a 50 gig volume that I created. Currently right now it's being replicated. The auto failover service is utilizing this task right now. The one below it, which is the 70 gig, I've created, but have added to the auto failover task. So what you want to make sure is verify that everything's working. Pretty much at this point, if I go to the volume replication functionality in DSSV6, you'll see that this is in source mode. And also, I've already started the replication, uh, volume replication for that 70 gig that we talked about. So currently, this right now is our LV00 replicating to the destination server. And that's already in our old failover task. And then this is our new iSCSI volume that I've created, 70 gig. Now that's already done. It's verified. We can go into the uh, status tasks. In here we could see that the replication is um, it's consistent you know, before we add them to the auto failover task. So how are we going to make this work? Well, right now, currently, I'm on the build 5845, which will require the latest small update. And this is where what you want to do is make sure that your auto failover is currently working. So we're going to work with the source right now. We're going to go to Setup, Network, Failover. Here, we're going to see that the status is running fine. Uh, the service is running. It's acting as the primary active server. The secondary, we can check as well. And this way, you have a clear indication that you're working with the two servers. Many of you may have more than one DSSv6. 
So that's why we're going through these processing steps. If we scroll down, we own one volume being replicated. Similarly, if we go to the primary, we also see that that has only one task working. So the whole objective here, as many of you have asked, is how do I add a new task without stopping the auto failover service? So we created these small updates, and of course it's going to be in the new release that's coming out in the end of March. It's already integrated. What I need to do is I need to go to the secondary first. And this also applies when you are updating the DSS v6. What we want to do is go to units, soft or update. And at this point, you want to be able to update the small update. So you browse. Here is that, that small update, which is the UPD underscore 0904C. And that was explained again into our PowerPoint. If we go right back in here, and I can give you that chart. If you look here, this is the one that we're referencing to for these two builds. So I will go ahead and, in fact, well, I just copy and paste, and we'll put this in the chat window so everybody can have that for information, and you can go ahead and copy that for your future information. Okay. Now, once we update the small update, then you hit apply, I mean the upload button, and at this point in time, uh, it's going to upload, and then, of course, I've already have it installed, so there's no need to do this, but what I want you to do is you'll see it installed, and at this point, you'd want to go ahead and maintenance, shut down, and then click on, on restart. Now, once you restart the secondary system, the primary will stay as the primary active server. Once the secondary comes back online, what you want to do is to make sure you go to setup, failover, network failover, And make sure you click on the start button. Okay, so that's going to be enabled for you uh, where you need to start the replication services. And now that small update is applied. You can verify that small update by going to maintenance, soft update. And if you click on the down arrow button next to the bill and scroll all the way down, you'll see that version, that little small update that we were just talking about, adding and removing iSCSI tasks when failover is running. So now we know we're running it. Now it's time to go ahead and update the primary. To up primary, uh, we want to make sure that the small update's are already done. And at this point, we want to do a manual failover. We're going to go ahead and apply that. And this is going to the secondary system secondary system is then going to promote itself as the active server. So here you see that the server's in suspend mode, and now we can apply the small update. Go to maintenance, software, update, for your small update, place the small update and hit upload. Here again, also added in so we don't have to spend time waiting for reboots. Here I have the small update for adding and removing iSCSI tasks. All right, so to save time, right now the secondary system, let's go to setup, network, failover. And you can see here it is now the active server. So at this point, let's just say that the primary or the source has rebooted. It's fully back up online now. So we're going to log back into our DSS v6 on the primary. We are going to verify that small update is now into the DSS v6, which was what we just did. Then we're going to go to setup, network, and then failover. You're going to build it still stating suspend mode active. And then finally, you're going to go to the secondary. And now we're going to fail back over. So what you want to do first is you want to sync the volumes. You want to be able to click on the sync volumes. And what it's doing is you want to make sure that 
the new data, if there was any new data being written through the secondary system, then it's synchronizing that data, the delta difference, back over to the primary so they're inconsistent to consistent mode. Now you can verify this data, the task status, and here they state that they're consistent. So that's what you want to look. So if you have many of those, just verify before you click on the next button, which is the fail back button. Now we're going to click the fail back button. And this is going to take a second because what it's going to do is mirror checking. Verify that the primary has a service uh, functionality working, the ping nodes working, um, the auxiliary ports are functioning. It's momentarily, you're going to see that soon. We go over to the source and we'll refresh the screen. We'll give it a second and it's going to promote itself. There we go. It's working right now as promoting itself the active server. Meanwhile, data still can be transferred, and of course, there's no data loss in doing this. So that way, your virtual IP addresses are always connected, and you're always able to continue for your virtual machines, your initiators, there's no um, any type of interruption. So now that we're putting back in, we see that the primary is the active server. If we look over to the secondary, it's now passive. So now your small updates are, are Install uh, to both DSSV6s. Let's scroll down to the failover task. And now we see the new iSCSI volume. And now we add it and hit apply. And we wait till it refreshes and it's done. Now let's verify that. What we can do is we can go to our iSCSI initiator. And this, what I'll be using is Microsoft's. Let's see if I can get to, see if we can get this to show up. Just give me a second here. Looks like the Microsoft uh, initiator is not populating on the video. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and refresh. And I'll just go ahead and connect to it. Let's see if we can see if we can see this right here. All right, on the screen. So here is that 50 gig that we created, uh, which was LV000. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect to the new one we just added. Just bear with me. And there is the set we were adding to the volume replicated uh, task. Got a failover service, and we'll just go ahead and format it, and let that run. Now, what I'm going to show you is the uniqueness of this. A lot of times, you may need to expand the volume. Well, where this update really adds value is that if we go back into the DSSV6 right here in the task, and let's say down the road, you need to expand this iSCSI volume. Well, obviously, you want to dismount from your initiators um, or your virtual machines or wherever this storage is being connected to. And at this point, what we can do is remove them from the task and hit apply. And now, it's, now this will give you the ability to stop the volume replication task and increase the volume size uh, for future needs. Uh, and again, I can add once you're done and you replicated the data um, and you're there, uh, in sync, which is they're consistent to consistent from source to destination, then we can add it back in. So this is a very unique feature that we've been working on for quite some time that's going to help a lot of you um, in adding new volume replicated tasks into the auto failover service. So it's kind of simple. And as you can see, it, it's a very useful tool. So we're almost done here, but I want to show you something. Remember we talked about on this new release that's going to be coming out, that in this version that I have right here, I'm showing the 5845. So let's say I decided that I do want to update to the next release that's coming out in March. I'm going to maintenance software update. So what do you do? 
Well, this is the version that I want to update to, the new release kit that has a newer kernel version, which is the 2.635. Uh, and this already has the small updates into it. But I'm already using the small updates that I currently have for this build, 5845. And if I click on the down arrow for the details for this build, because the check mark means that I'm currently active, actively using this build. So if I scroll down, I'm going to before updating to the DSSV6. So keep that in mind that when you update to the DSSV6, please remove this, and that way go ahead and reboot the server. Similar in the same fashion we talked about before. So you want to update the, the secondary first and apply the update. Remove this small update as we see here. Restart the system. Then bring up the secondary. And then, of course, failover from primary to secondary. So it, it's that easy. And, of course, you all have my uh, the notes that I've applied into the chat window that you have there. If you have any other questions, you can email us at priest-sales at open com or submit a support ticket. And I will go ahead and ask the guys again to send you these small updates. I'm just going to come in. It says, uh, will you have to reboot after the update removal? Or can you just remove the update, then boot to the new version? Yeah, you can. So basically, the question is, um, we have to reboot after the update. No, you can remove it. So if I were just to simulate it right now, go ahead and remove this. First of all, what you want to do is, when you do this, you want to go ahead and remove this. Then. And apply this. Make sure that your default will be on 6059. At this point in time, then go to maintenance, shut down, and click restart. Now bear in mind, if I'm on this new version that's coming up, um, you're, you're not going to be, you have to keep that in mind that you have to remove those small updates to be able to have that functionality function work. Okay, uh, pretty much that's it. I just wanted to let everybody, wait, we got another question coming in. So what if support contract doesn't allow for small updates? What do we do? What do we have to wait on to the next version? All right, uh, the question is, what if support contact doesn't, or contract doesn't allow small updates? Uh, do we have to wait on the next version? What the, they're talking about is if your support uh, is basic standard support. So here if we look at the technical policy, and you can verify this through your user, user portal. And here, support standard support doesn't uh, provide the small updates that we offer. Only the premium support does. Um, and it's very inexpensive. I mean, for $399, you can contact us as many times as you want. Uh, it's from here. provides also the ability, in case something uh, you're having issues, we can remotely get in there get our uh, developers, our tier three engineers to provide support for you. Uh, also, it gives you a lot of other access that uh, commonly isn't there for the standard support or for the basic support. Uh, maybe you possibly need a NetViewer session to come in and check your other systems, make sure maybe the VMware is not set up right to connect to the initiators, uh, connect with your initiators to our target, things of this nature to help you out to speed up your process and provide you the information you need. Plus, not only that, it's a four-hour response time, so that'll help you out. Good question. So at this point, um, if there's no other questions, I want to thank everybody for showing. You can always, looks like we have another question. If we buy a product with the free standard support, can we update to premium difference of $100 dollars uh, for that? No, there isn't because the uh, you're talking about that the free comes with the product itself when you purchase it. So the difference between and the when you purchase it for the first year, you get one year free from the standard. There's no difference in cost structure of getting a discount when you purchase the premium. Uh, due to because of what you get on the premium, uh, there's a lot of value add to it. Any other questions? Here's a question. Is that will there 
This is all available somewhere on the knowledge base currently right now. No, but we could put them up there. I might be able to do that possibly uh, for us probably the next following week. Probably post it up there for those who need it. A lot of times, a lot of engineers don't like to update immediately. They want to wait till a release, um, basically what they call gets out of the oven and bakes long enough. Uh, but we've had this release out for this release candidate for over a month and a half, and we're doing a lot of testing with it. So if you're looking also to test the, the this release candidate, you know, we found some improvements for you know, the newer drivers that are in there and, of course, the newer kernel. So we've seen some enhancements as well.